Greetings, fellas and people from the interwebs. I'm your host this well, it's morning at the moment, DJ Ignite. I'm not really a DJ, but, uh, well, neither are you. So, this is episode 1.1 of my new tutorial series, which this is, this is like the fourth fucking time I've filmed this. Hooray. Uh, the first time I actually did all the tutorials, but none of the sound came through. But, that's enough of that. I'm going to start the timer, which is 15 minutes not an hour 48 like my phone is trying to tell me there we go all right so in episode 1.1 1. 1, uh, we're going to identify and explain the step sequencer mixer the action bar at the top the browser and plugin picker as well as the playlist and the background and we might cover a bit of the options menu as well so this uh, first tutorial is actually aimed at people who have just gotten the program and they don't know what to do. They've started the program and you get a layout very similar to this right here, uh, but you don't know where to go. So I'm just going to quickly point out everything that you see when you first start up the program and go through them all. Starting with the top, this bar at the top, I call this the action bar. I don't actually know the technical term. The top left, you've got the FL logo, which is covered by my Fraps recording frame rate thing. Uh, the title of which the program is registered to, which is me. Uh, minimize, maximize, close, regular Windows buttons. Then you got your file edit channel and all that sort of shit, just like any other program. A little knurl on the left hand side, which lets you move it around. And underneath is a little window. Uh, I call this a preview window because if you put your mouse over something, it'll tell you what it is, like what it does, and also the uh, keyboard shortcut for it. To the right of that, you get two little icons here. They're non clickable and they're just MIDI. Uh, little mini indicators so if they flash blue that means that it's you know synced up or you're getting some sort of MIDI data going through same if this one flashes green you got your yeah, master volume and master pitch these uh, when I say master I mean it is the volume or pitch for the entire door or digital audio workstation so this controls the volume of everything and the pitch of everything to the top here you got your timer so when you press play it counts up you can change the orientation of the timer in different formats. I don't really know what them, what they are. I just leave them in minutes and seconds and milliseconds. Uh, then you've got your monitor, which displays the wave. If you make a sound, you get a little wave thing there, as well as uh, another type of monitor. You can change the view here as well. You've got your CPU monitor, which tells you your usage, your RAM usage, and how many polys are being played or voices uh, we'll get into a little bit this maybe the polys and all that sort of shit a bit later on then you got your windows these five buttons up here you got your playlist which is that your step sequencer your piano roll which you don't see when you first start up the program your library viewer and your mixer which is that to the right here you've got a little news update thing which you can't actually get rid of and I don't even use. To the bottom left here you have your patterns, pattern and song play selector so you want to play in pattern mode or song mode. Then you've got your little scroll for the song position or pattern position. Play, stop and record. Play is also pause when you press play. Your tempo which is the speed of the song and oh, then you've got your pattern selection. Now a pattern is, you create a pattern with say a beat and then another pattern with another beat and you put them all together in the playlist here. But we'll get into that a bit later. Uh, then you have these 10 little radio buttons here. You've got keyboard to keyboard piano which means if you don't have a piano plugged into your computer or a MIDI controller you can actually use your QWERTY keyboard as a piano sort of thing. So I'll get into that a little bit later as well. A countdown for when you're recording. Uh, don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, Multi-link to controllers so you can link almost everything to different controller functions and shit. Um, an auto scroll, auto horizontal scroll when it's playing a song. Step editor, uh, wait record. So when you press record it won't count down, it will just wait until you press a note and it will start recording then. And a metronome for when you're playing. And the metronome ticks to the tempo, obviously. And then you've got these seven buttons here. Undo, save, uh, render, cut, record, 
profile uh, program info uh, project information and help and you can move all these around and do your own thing by clicking on the little nerl on the left hand side of each majigger cool so we've done that now to the left here you've got the library which is a lot like the windows explorer uh, it's got a similar sort of layout there and in here you find various different folders which may contain things in the mixer packs folder that will be closed so you just right click on that and say expand all and that'll expand everything that comes with your FL Studio or FLS you've got various different things like basic kit uh, drum kits and some other bullshit sounds and a few no, Fox. Activate. Which you really don't want to use because most amateurs use those. Um, at the top here, you've got your little drop down with different options, and I always have mine auto hidden. So you just get a little bit more space to play with shit. Uh, collapse structure, reread structure. So if you've made any adjustments in Windows itself, like in any of the files, you can just, that's just a refresh or reload. And close, obviously but you can do the exact same thing by clicking on that one. That just closes it and reopens it. Then you've got this, the step sequencer. At the top here, you've got how many beats are in a particular pattern. So by default, it's four, or when it's all the way to nothing like that, that's four. Uh, repeat, another little play-pause thing. There's heaps, of, I'll just make this clear, there's heaps of ways of doing, of accomplishing the same task in FL Studio. So, uh, yeah, you'll figure out your own way and what's best and fastest for you. Um, new pattern, and also clone pattern, insert pattern, delete pattern, move up, split by channel, all this other shit here. Uh, swing for the pattern, and then you've got graph editor for whatever is selected. So that green light uh, tells you which instrument is selected. So when an instrument is selected, you can change... By clicking on this graph here, you can change the velocity, the pan, the release, the mod, the modulation, and the shift, and all that other shit. And then if you click on the piano here, you can choose what note it plays by default, because all you can do in the step sequencer is tell it to either play or not play. And uh, just clicking on this little keyboard editor, you can actually tell it a little bit more what you want it to play, because by default it'll just play middle C. With a kit, it doesn't really matter, because the note is always middle C as you can see here. So yeah, to the left of every instrument, by the way these squares here are your instruments, to the left you've got a mute, so when it's muted it won't play anything, then you've got the panning for that instrument, the volume for that instrument, and as you can see when I change the values that you can see up here that the values, it'll tell you what values, what the values are. Sorry I'm getting my words mixed up the name of the instrument and you can click this and change various different settings within it uh, we'll go into that a little bit later uh, if it's selected or if they're all selected for a group based setting change whether it be volume or pitch or whatever and then you get and get it to play so if I press play up here or in here it doesn't really matter while it's in pattern mode it'll cycle through the pattern and keep repeating if I click here and here it'll make that easy and if you'll notice here it's in pattern 2 if I move that back to pattern 1 it goes away go back to pattern 2 and it's there again so that's the basis for creating loops which is why the whole program's called Fruity Loops or FL Studio for short to the right here you will have the playlist this is where your patterns I'll just put that pattern back in when you've made a pattern you can slap it straight into the playlist and it will show you what it is um, now there used to be for the older versions a little grid based pattern editor where each line was allocated to a pattern and you slapped them in like so but um they've since changed that but you can get back into that by uh fucking going into one of these settings somewhere but i don't know i'm not really going to go into that just yet um you have a drop down arrow like you do with the library and you can edit different things use different tools like quantize you have your snap settings yeah, pencil, paintbrush, delete, mute, fuck knows, cut, select, 
zoom and play whatever you want it to play. Another play pause, which is the exact same as playing pausing up here, except it plays in song mode. If you play up here, it'll play in pattern mode automatically. And watch this little pattern and song thing, because when I press play here, it goes straight to song mode. Easy. Oh, you can select which pattern you want to slap in there, or you can just go to the pattern and slap it in. Make sure you're either in the paintbrush or the pencil tool when you do that. Three little things here, which I don't use. Your scrolling thing, your time indicator, so you can drag this arrow to where if you wanted to go and get it to play from there. A mute for each track line. So you can have pattern two, three, and four just in track one, and you can mute that if you want to listen to whatever other patterns you've got in here. So let's just close that for now and we'll go to the mixer. And now you'll see this uh, little limiter, it's called a fruity limiter here, but uh, that always gets loaded into your master track, but we're just going to get rid of that. In the mixer you'll see yet another drop down arrow with more settings and shit which we won't go into. A little scroll so you can scroll through each insert or channel insert. And it goes all the way up to 99. So you can have 99 different inserts with all different effects. Now, uh, to the bottom here you've got an import which if I had as if, oh fuck I clicked on it didn't I, great. If I had a microphone or a guitar or something plugged into an external sound card I can select it and record straight into an insert and using this plugin here called Edison I can record, record that import and put it into FL Studio. So down here you've got eight different ins uh, little things that you can import, which are effects, and you've got eight per channel. So as you see in the master here, there's that limiter again, and in number one or two or three or whatever I click on, that's gone away because that's in the master track. So you just click on the drop down, and here's a list of all your little uh, effects that you can put in. I'll talk about effects later on in another uh, tutorial. You've also got a mute for an effect and the volume of the effect. For every insert, you've got a very basic parametric equalizer. So you've got your bass, your mid-range, and your treble, and you can also drag that around and do it manually with these encoders, uh, sliders, sorry, and encoders. Now when I say encoder, these little twisty knobs are called encoders, and these little sliding things are called sliders, so that's pretty straightforward except for the encoder. I don't know what that is, and the output for whatever, but it's going to play through your speakers anyways. I have no idea what these are, and this is just the volume, which is this slider here. Moving over, you've got your master and your different inserts. And what you do with these inserts is you assign an instrument or instruments to an, a channel or an insert, and you can give it different effects based on what you want, and therefore create more depth for your song. Uh, for each insert or master track, you have your pan, so which speaker it comes out of, the left speaker or the right speaker, a mute, I don't know what any of that does, then you've got your volume, and I don't know what any of this does either. But um, yeah, you can insert eight different effects for each channel, and I don't know what these sends are here either. And selected is, if you have, say, that selected, it will show you what's in the selected thing as well. I don't, that's, yeah, kind of redundant, a redundant feature. And last but not least, we have the piano roll, because that's the fifth thing that I wanted to show you in this tutorial. And this is where you input your notes uh, and get them to play in a pattern. Now, if you might not, if you don't notice, that's actually supposed to be piano on this left here. And uh, if I click on this ABC just here, you see that it goes back to notes, so that's just a different view technique. If I open up the playlist again and match these up just here, you'll notice that these have the same tools as the playlist. So we've got our pencil, our paintbrush, our mute, our delete, our cut, and all that sort of stuff, except for this one extra button, which is tools. So you can add in riffs, or quantize, or chop, or glue, or arpeggiate, and all this other sort of stuff which I don't even use except for quantize and then a drop down menu with more options and shit so <laughs> yeah there's it looks daunting at first but uh, it's actually quite straightforward and you probably won't even use most of these functions oh and you've also got another little play pause which put, plays in pattern mode uh, 
You can also select which instrument you want from up here and select if you want to change the velocity, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, that's it for episode 1.1. I hope this was useful to you, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you again in episode 2.1.2. Uh, <laughs> Farewell for now.